Hi, I'm Mosik, and you're watching another episode of Artist Life. Welcome to my studio. Have you ever wondered of how artists go out and create these beautiful planar paintings? Well, in this episode, I'm going to share with you some of my thoughts of how that's possible. So if you're ready, here we go. We need a few things before we start. A 9x12 canvas, acrylic cadmium red, ultramarine blue oil, phthalo blue, yellow ochre, cadmium yellow, alizarin red, ivory black, titanium white, liquid or galkite for drying purposes, palette paper, and a terpenoid. Also, you'll need a number two and a number six flat bristle brush and a palette knife. I've chosen this picture to my left. It's from a calendar and I'll be painting this as planar. So here we go. As you can see on my right, I have applied acrylic uh, on my canvas, red acrylic paint, and I'll be using that as a middle tone. So the first thing I would like to do is to sketch. So, I am mixing Prussian blue with white and I'll be using that as my um, as my paint, as my color. So, let's see, we have the mountain that's going to start from right there. Also, we have the green. I, I would like to use that for my horizon line, which starts right there. Okay. And uh, I'm not sure about the red flowers that's in the front. I'll probably um, just disregard those. After the sketch, uh, what I'll need to do is probably hold on to my darks and my lights, my value, uh, because as I am painting this, I have the sun, which is constantly um, changing my um, shadows. I'm going to be using alizarin with, with black and I want to bring these dark tones in here just so I can capture the value and even though my darks, my, my lights will change, I, I will have something to go by. So this is what I'm doing. I'm applying my dark tones first. Okay, so this is dark right here, real, real loose. I'm simplifying, obviously. So I'm taking my white along with my Prussian uh, blue and just applying the paint. If you notice, you have the red seeping through, which creates a really cool effect. So as far as the changes in value, that's really important, keeping your brush really loose like I went a little bit darker here which is fine 
and then apply the dark on top okay and then take the white right here So I want to keep the sky really simple. Again, have the red just kind of peeking through a little bit here. Have you noticed how I'm holding the brush? It's like this. And I apply the paint by pulling my arm So now I am going to start applying uh, some color in the mountain. So this part of the mountain, as you could see, it, it's a different blue. I am going to apply some changes, like lighter changes here. Okay, and as I paint this part of the mountain here, the mountain that's at a distance, uh, I am reshaping my landscape. In other words, I'm reshaping this rock here. See? Okay, I'm going to apply a little bit of alizarin to make that um, a little warmer. Right there. Apply some changes. Okay, so. Now, make sure that you're holding on to your darks and your lights. So, what that means is the left side where I'm working on right now needs to be darker. So, you don't want to have that escape from you, you know. So, you want to control the drawing, have control over the entire drawing by applying these darks. Okay? bring this out so the cool thing about painting wet onto wet is that as you apply the paint you can um, correct your drawing you can bring brush strokes like I did here into the sky okay and then apply the dark tone underneath like that and also this needs to be lighter here because it's at a distance. So what I'm going to do is take more white and make this a little bit lighter. Okay. Again, have the canvas show through. That's that's okay. And um, as I'm applying and moving paint around, uh, sometimes I want to um, soften the edges depends on your um, on your landscape like this area here the edges are soft so I want to just pull away with my brush and just kind of soften like I did here okay all right so let's move on to um, this rock here I I think I'm going to make that a really warm color not too dark so I'm taking the black along with my cadmium red and um, and I want to apply this color here if you notice it's very warm right now okay so 
these areas that I indicated as it being um, dark. I, I don't want to go over those. So right here, that's going to be a little bit lighter. I want to emphasize that. When you're applying the paint um, on the canvas, don't just keep it one color. Um, put dark tones, for example, maybe this area is a little bit darker. I might come back later on and apply the greenery on top, but right now it's not necessary. So I think I'm going to switch back to my brush uh, and then come back with my palette knife and create some textures. All right. I like the fact that it has a little bit of blue because that's graying the color. Um, because primary colors will actually give you um, the color gray. So sometimes it works out. And also, I'm not getting into every single detail. As I was pulling this, I wanted to keep this rough. Okay, so if you notice, the edges are really rough and this is straight right there. So that's important that you can apply the roughness of the landscape. So, bringing this down. I'm applying this color. Right there and just Pull that sideways. Okay, so this needs to be darker. If you notice, I applied my brush like this and I moved it to create that roughness. I want to work on the mountain in the distance, so. Let's take that and just bring it down. Okay, and a little lighter there. If you notice, I am constantly moving around from one uh, part of the painting to the other. I think I want to go back to to the sky and do more refinement and uh, let's see what happens so right there reshaping and staying around my drawing Right about the mountains, it's usually lighter anyway, as you can see.
Okay, so now let's go back to the landscape there. Cad yellow, cad red, and a hint of ultramarine, not too much, okay? Because I want to bring that and create some bright colors here and there, okay? So I can even use a knife for this, so that might be a better better idea. So let's switch to a knife, okay? And here we go. Over here, what I decided to do was to keep it dark and then light. So, so it's going to be a stronger change of lights and darks versus what you have here on the on the calendar. So, so I'm making this lighter and just bring my knife like this to create a shadow effect here. want to refine this stuff okay let's go with purple on top okay that might look good you know sometimes I'll start with the color that I think will work but then as I start applying it um, I'll have a change of heart like that's what was happening with the purple so what I decided to do was take the purple and mix it with the cad red and the black which gave me a brownish color so I'm cooling the black and the cad red to get this shade of color so as you could see see this now switching back to the brush I think I do want to add some more refinements okay like this area here okay sometimes you can get lost in your own thoughts it's such a relaxing way of painting So I want to wipe my brush right here as you could see it's, it's a little harsh so take your brush and just refine it sometimes you'll need to soften okay the edge the brush and just kind of like dab it like this
No, uh, I don't want the greenery to dominate. like different shades of the green kind of like working together so that it doesn't look flat and to do that I'm taking ultramarine blue with the green I had because that is going to darken it see um, let's take over here that now the cadmium red along with the green I have that's going to gray down the green so because it's their complement so if you notice it just warms it up and grays it down and adds another um, dimension to the color I want to um, apply like a shadow so I'm taking pressure now with my green and that's going to be the shadow so um, because the Sun is coming from uh, the right um, the shadow will obviously common sense it'll go towards like that there okay. so the shadow and the landscape they're light so what I'm going to they're wet so what I'm going to do is just soften there okay just creates a change I don't know some sometimes you can call this done if you want if there's nothing else to apply so going back to this um, flower I think it'll be out of place just to put that flower it might not work again change is good and that's what's happening here you're creating change and I think to be honest with you, I think I should be done with this. Well, I am done with this, as you could see. I went ahead and created this painting uh, my way. And uh, I wanted to show you um, a few examples. And um, here we go. This is the Renaissance Palace, renowned for its uh, multicolored uh, marble facade on the Grand Canal. So if you notice, the colors that Monet used, uh, there's a lot of interpretation gone into this painting and also the brush strokes, it resembles um, the, the palace of uh, Palazzo Dario, but he definitely added his own artistic license. This one is another one of Claude Monet. 
and he definitely took a lot of artistic license. The picture on the left is the actual site and the picture of the painting on the right is his uh, version, his, um, his own uh, creation of that site. And as you notice, um, he did a lot of eliminating, didn't he? If you compare both, both um, painting and the scene. Amazing. Thanks for watching this episode of Artist Life. I hope you had fun. I know I did. Again, if you have any questions about this show or this episode or even this painting, uh, like to hear about it. My website address and contact information is on the screen. So till next time, happy painting. Bye.